Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, here we are, episode two of Hobby Table. I am shaking up my Bone Wraith here. I'll show it to you. My Bone Wraith Citadel color uh, contrast spray. It works for any kind of undercoat. It doesn't need to be contrast undercoat, but we're going to be contrast painting anyway, so it'll work out. I've got the uh, Hobby Cam set up out here. Hello. See? Uh, so that we can do this. Uh, hopefully it won't be too loud. I'm going to move the microphone um, out there in just a second. Let me make sure I'm not muted. I've got a feeling I might be. Uh, no, I'm not. Yay. All right. Not muted. Wonderful. Okay. So I am going to move this microphone out shortly, but first I'll show you the setup I've got. So the first thing you want to do is shake the uh, spray paint. This is, uh, like I mentioned before, this is Wraithbone. This is my new favorite um, undercoat to use. It's a, kind of a, an off-white. It's pretty nice. And it goes on really, really smooth, which is the important thing. It doesn't get dusty like some of the other lighter colored sprays that are out there. Uh, it really works great. So I'm using that. And the first step is to shake it a lot. So about I would say about two minutes is, is good. Luckily, the sun came out. It's not as rainy as it was yesterday. You can't really prime in the rain because the humidity kind of messes with it. Priming stream. That's right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. So we're going to prime uh, some skinks today. So we built the basilodon last time today. I'll be priming skin some skinks. Let me just hold them out up here, actually. There you go. This is what we're going to be priming. I've got the webcam, uh, the normal hobby cam is now on a tripod outside on my little office porch. We've got 10 skinks on here. And so what I, what I actually like to do is um, I have an old uh, wine bottle here actually. And so I put some sticky tack on top and uh, I'll show this on the, the bigger camera too. So just a wine bottle with some sticky tack on top. And then uh, I have a long like string of sticky tack holding these guys on the uh, piece of cardboard. And if you're wondering where I got this piece of cardboard, this is just part of the packaging for a piece of furniture. You usually find these like corner pieces um, on like, uh, you know, wooden posts and things like that in furniture. And, and if you save these, they were great for little stands for priming your miniatures. So I try to put it evenly on the wine bottle, just kind of press it down a little bit so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't come off. I'm going to move the microphone outside now. So we're going to be doing a little bit of outside stuff. Hopefully this doesn't get too loud. I'll try to keep it a little bit away from all the noise. We'll see how that works. We'll see how this works. Let me know if it sounds OK. And so what you want to do is uh, not spray it like right, right in front of it. You want to give it about six to eight inches um, and you don't want to leave it on there for a while. I'll just kind of show you the technique and, and we'll see how it goes. So. And then you just rotate it a little bit. All right, the mic's down here. You just rotate it a little bit as a loud garbage truck goes by and do more. that. Let's get all the angles. It's always good to get a little bit on uh, top as well. Um, so now if we look at it, these are all pretty, pretty nicely primed actually. Those look pretty good. Yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm looking on like the insides of the shield, seeing if there's maybe an angle where I could improve the coverage a little bit. But I think it looks pretty solid. I think maybe from this angle, like up here, it could use a bit more on the end of some of these. There we go. All right. So, yeah, that looks pretty nice. Pretty smooth. Checking again. The tops of these, 
could use a little bit more. You always want to check a little bit because when you think you've got it, sometimes you do end up missing some of that. And so you generally want to prime outdoors too. Like I'm doing this. Thankfully the wind isn't blowing it back in my face. It's going out there. If it was blowing this way, I wouldn't be doing it because uh, I'd be getting pretty dizzy at that point. Um, and if you do get a little bit dizzy while priming sometimes, you should probably change the angle a little bit. Uh, be aware of where you're standing, where things are blowing back into your face. Because um, it, uh, it can make you a tad uh, um, dizzy, we'll say. But anyway, not feeling that right now, thankfully. I'm going to put... I think it's pretty good. This coverage looks solid. I don't know if you guys can see this here. All right. I'm getting high off paint fumes with Doa on Twitch TV. <laughs> the new show. But no, ideally you will not be feeling anything except for a, a pride, a sense of pride in how well primed your models are. But this is looking uh, looking pretty good right now. Sweet. All right. So uh, we'll take these guys inside. And uh, yeah, I should be cutting to like a larger camera, like this camera in a larger sense. Maybe I'll do that next time. The line models work so well for this, honestly. They work great. So these skinks are pretty well primed. Um, they're looking good. And so you need to let it dry for a bit. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna let it sit there and dry. Um, I've got a couple more to prime, but I want to get done. I've got a cord here that I need to like limbo my way under. There we go. But like I've talked about before, these corner pieces. Oh, the mic. The uh, the microphone's out here now. Oops. Anyway, these corner pieces right here. These work so well in terms of uh, having something you can put on top of the wine bottle and then take off again and set on like the edge of a table or something while it dries. They were great. So I'm going to put a couple more models on these now. How's the sound, by the way? Is it, is it okay? Kinks off here, just touching the base. I won't touch the actual model itself. <laughs> I do. What what is this this wine? I don't even know. I don't even know what wine this is. It's Cote de Roses, the best wine bottle for priming your miniatures. Ah yes, that's good stuff. We got dusty hand, but there you go. Do you want to know what wine this is? This is the best wine bottle for making a miniature priming stand, in my opinion. You can see it's gone through a lot of different, uh, a lot of uses. It is, it is, it is rosé. So, um, I've got a little bit of ticky, sticky tack. Uh, so this is sticky tack. Um, if you're not familiar with this, you can get this. Go away, bus. You can get this at uh, Target or something like that, or really anywhere, any little good store, and this will like never lose its tackiness. Even when you put paint on it, you just kind of roll into a ball again, and it's like it wasn't even there, and, and uh, it doesn't stick too much, it doesn't make your hands sticky. This is really amazing stuff, and you can get like a nice pack of it for like five bucks at most stores that are open right now anyway, if they're not, get it online or something. But this is great for just temporarily adhe adhering models to things to prime them or temporarily putting pieces of models together to kind of see what the, something looks like if you're kit bashing so this is like a vital tool i think in the in the hobby sort of uh realm yeah anyway so now what i'm doing is creating a couple more of these uh, little stands basically so we need to prime we need to prime uh, this guy, if you remember him. Remember him from the other day? Gotta prime that guy. All right, and you can see, this is on pretty good. It's not gonna fall off unless I shake it, so I'm pretty, ready to do this and rotate it around without worrying too much about the model, which is important. So 
So since it's been a couple minutes, I have to shake it a little bit more again. About 30 seconds or so is usually good. My neighbors probably think I've gone insane, but maybe they're right. Hello, world. All right, ready? So same thing, just pretty even coverage on the area. Don't sit on one place too long. Don't put it right up close. Put it about six to eight inches away or so. Try to get all the angles. Don't forget the bottom of the model, and don't forget the top of the model either. Don't forget the underside and the back here. Uh, or the front. There we go. And so, as you can see, a couple more little angles to just patch it up, but overall that's pretty, looking pretty good. Yeah. All right. Cool. So yeah, if you look at this, where there was gray plastic, there is now a beautiful off-white miniature ready to paint. So. Back in here. Put it on the edge. We've got one. we got one more to do. We've got the uh, Skink Star Priest. It's a hero. Let's take a little bit more again. And so once more, you've got a nice, nicely primed model right there, just like that. Pretty easy, honestly. All right, I, can, I will assume you can all hear me pretty well. And so that's it for now. I can move the uh, microphone back in here, because that's it for the priming for the moment. And uh, I do have uh, these guys, but I only had time to build one of them, so we're not going to worry about them today. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, like, it's the, the coverage, you get really good coverage from this primer, and it does go on uh, really smoothly, um, as you can see. So as we let this dry, um, that's pretty much it as far as uh, priming your models go. It really is that simple. You just uh, have the right distance for the spray can. Big thing is you shake it up enough ahead of time. About two minutes is usually good. And then make sure you hit all the angles. And uh, you know don't overdo it. There's a little bit of a technique to it, but honestly, I had great results the very first time I ever primed a model. So it's really not that hard. So we built the models. Now we prime the models. Next step is gonna be actually putting some paint on them. It'll be great. <laughs>